and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's episode, I want to talk about SAM, AWS SAM. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> Today is the beginning of a new series I will cover for the month of September, AWS SAM. Yes, SAM. SAM has been out for a long time and I have not made a video about it. So I think now it's time. So I will create a series of four videos on SAM during September, but that doesn't mean that this is the last of SAM you will see. This is just the beginning. And in all the videos, if you want to see some particular topic, leave it in the comment box below because I can create a second set of videos with the topics that you are interested in watching. But this is the beginning, so this is an introduction to what is AWS SAM. So let's start with the elephant in the room. What is AWS SAM? SAM means sa simplified application model and it has this really little cute squirrel as the mascot i leave it here so you can see it is really cute and that's one of the things that i love from sam before i knew it and it's an extended way of doing cloud formation for making easier to create your lambdas dynamodb tables and api gateway so basically it came after serverless framework and is inspired a bit in it and it has new things and it has a lot of different things as well. So with SAM, as with serverless framework, you write your application definition on a YAML or in a JSON file, and that will be like your infrastructure, and that will be packaged into another file and will be uploaded to your cloud and we will deploy it with CloudFormation. And also with, with SAM, you can do local testing, you can use the application repository, you can do the log, you can check the logs, you can check what is going on in your project. So it has a lot of features and we are going to explore some of these features during this series. But if you're interested in other particular features, remember to put it in the comments. So I make a video. So in this video, I want to go hands on on what is SAM and how to create a simple application with one Lambda and one API gateway. And I want to show you how to get started with SAM if you have not already tried out. One disclaimer, I have never used SAM before. I have done one or two tutorials with AWS that I don't remember much, so that doesn't count. This was my first kind of exposure without any kind of tutorial on exploring SAM. So I will guide you through what happened to me as a beginner with SAM and maybe it's a fun video to watch. So that's the disclaimer. And now let's go to the code and create a very, very simple project. As always, the code link is available in the description box in a GitHub repo. So to get started with some, what we are going to do is to go to the documentation that is available in the AWS lab repository called serverless application model. There you will be able to see how to get started with some but I was reading the documentation and I could not find any simple example on how to get started or neither tutorial. So I will explore on my own how it gets started. So the first thing you see is the cute squirrel and it's explained more or less what SAM does and it tells you how to create your SAM and it explains what you can do with SAM and that there is a how to guide and example. So I go to how to and it says to write a SAM template, the check the specifications, and that's how to deploy and how to pack it. I will go to the examples and let's see. So examples, there is no readme, so I just go to apps. And there's still no readme, so I don't know which one of these ones should I start with. So hello world sounds quite promising. So I will open the readme and the readme is empty. So that's a good start. <laughs> and now I can go and open the template. And in the template, I'm able to see that it only has one Lambda and I'm looking for something with a Lambda and API gateway. So I will check the next one right next to it that it's called HTTPS request. 
let's see what that one does readme stills is empty so let's go to the template yaml and there we can see that there is one function but there is no api so that's what, not what i'm looking for so let's go back and let's continue browsing and then I found something called microservice HTTP endpoint. There is no readme whatsoever, but well, let's check the template. And in here I can see there is one function and there is some kind of policies for accessing a table and there is an API. So maybe I can use this as my base. So I will create a new directory and there I will call it some test basic project. And I will get into that directory and I will create a new file called template YAML, as I saw in the examples. So let's open this with Atom. So I have here with Atom and I can just copy paste everything and let's modify it a little bit because I don't want the Dynamo table and I can see there that there is just the proper the policies but there is no table defined. So let's clean a little bit this up. Let's change node 6 to node 8 and let's remove the policies for the access to the table because I don't need that. And now we have one function and one API. So let's change the path to hello and let's change the handler to be in the handler file, hello. So if you see, this is really, really kind of makes very straight connection to what is in serverless YAML. It's just a little bit different organized, but it's I never saw a template like this before and for me it just makes sense so i'm cleaning up a little bit the, the descriptions and now let's change the name of the lambda because that's a long name so let's call it hello so now we have everything so you can see that there is the resources like we have in the serverless yaml where we put our cloud formation here we have resources and then we have hello that is the kind of cloud formation name for this resource and i call it hello and that's a function and it has some properties and the properties are where the code is for this function is in the handler.js uh, file in the method hello we have not created that yet so you will not find it then the right time for this lambda is 8.10 the code URI, it will be where this Lambda will be packaged and we will get to that in a moment. We have the description for the Lambda, the memory is 512, we can put whatever we want. Timeout is 10 seconds and we can put whatever we want. And that's the event that triggers this Lambda that is called API1. It's a type of API and it has a property that is a path, hello, at a method any. Now let's create a new file and we call it handler.js and in there we can see what is in the template. In the example, in the index.js, there is kind of looking into the database so I really would not want to copy that code. So I will just put another code that is kind of similar but instead of doing things whenever we delete, git, post or put, I will just send a response with a different response. So I will have the handler, the hello method, and there uh, we will have a switch. And depending on the HTTP method, I will just send a reference message. So I have the send response method that will just send a different status code and a message. So for delete, it will say delete happen, forget, it will set get happen, and blah blah blah. Let's continue reading. Now we have our project and we can see we read something about packaging and we have to package this artifact so meaning that we need to upload this to a bucket and then it will be able to deploy to cloud formation so that's the code ORI it's a dot so it means that it will be packed in the same um, uh, directory and then we need to run this command that is there, AWS CloudFormation package, to upload the artifact to S3. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a new bucket. I call it some test bucket foobar. You need to put a different name. Remember, buckets are unique. And for all this, you need to have installed the AWS CLI. If you don't know how to install that, I will leave you a link in the description on how to do it with the instructions from AWS. Now we have our bucket and the next step is to package this. So we will run AWS CloudFormation package dash dash template file, the name of the template we want to package. 
in which S3 bucket and we put the name of the bucket and then the name of the package file that it will be package template YAML. So we press enter and it's package. So now everything is in our bucket and it says that now we need to execute the following command to deploy the package template and it says that we need to do AWS CloudFormation deploy template file that we just got and then the stack name. But if we check the documentation, that's not enough. We need to put one more thing that is the, the capabilities. So, so now we are going to run uh, the deploy of the CloudFormation and for that I will run this command AWS dash dash region and I will specify the region. If you already have configured your region in your AWS CLI, you can avoid this, but I don't have it configured because I like to change region. I put it here and as I created the bucket in US East 1, I want the region of this to be the same. Then I will put CloudFormation and deploy and I will find the template file and as I'm in the directory, that's the name, package template, YAML and then the stack name, I will create a new stack name that can be anything that you have not already created in your account in your region, some test basic project that is the same as the name of the project and then the capabilities that is I am. Thus you press enter and this takes a little while, that is when it's deploying the template to CloudFormation. I will speed this up a bit and we can see what is going on in our cloud formation. So we can see now that the stack appear and we can see that there are resources. There is a REST API, there is a Lambda, there is a role and we can click in the API and we can see that is some test basic project is there. And if we go to st stages, we can see the resources. We have hello and any. And if we go to stages, we can see that there is production and stage. So let's open stage and hello and any, any method. And there we can see the invoke URL that we can just basically paste in the browser. And we can see that get happened because browser sends a get. And then we can check the Lambda and we can see that it has a trigger from API Gateway. It has access to the logs. We can see down there the code that we just put. And if we click on API Gateway, then we will be able to see the URL of the endpoint. If we want to remove this, it's as easy as running AWS dash dash region, the region you are into. You don't need this if you have already configured it in your AWS. Uh, clean, but as I have not, I have to put it here. Then CloudFormation, delete the stack, the name of the stack, and that will remove the whole infrastructure from your account. That was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And in the next video of this series, we are going to work a little bit on making a little bit more complex project to see a little bit more about some and what we can do with it. If you want to see something, don't forget to leave it in the comment box below. And I want to know, are you using some in production? What is your experience? Why some and not serverless framework? I would like to know that. So around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao, ciao.